Chapter 16. The Rat Trap. Scrambling out of the sewer, they replaced the manhole cover and snuck out the back of the Emporium. As they entered base camp, Darkus saw one of the strings of the bottle tops was jangling. It's the rat trap, Bertolt said, as Newtop Newton flew up to join his cousins on the ceiling. Virginia ran a finger over the map on the wardrobe. The one by the wall? Bertolt, no Bertolt nodded. What should we do? If it's Humphrey or Pickering, we should leave them in there, Virginia said. It'll make moving the mountain easier. It's probably a fox, Darkot said, seeing the frightened look on Bertolt's face. There's only one way to find out, Virginia said, running back out the door and falling to her knees. As they crept towards the rat trap, Bertolt whispered, Surely Humphrey couldn't get into the furniture forest. He's too big. He must be pickering. If it is, let's tie him up and tape over his mouth, Darker said, thinking about the time he'd spent tied to a chair. Suddenly, Baxter leapt off his shoulder and zoomed forwards. Shh, Virginia put her finger to her lips. You could hear a man struggling and cursing. Baxter landed and crawled along the top of the rat trap, flicking his lecture in the air. Virginia silently climbed up onto a chest of drawers and peered down into the trap. She clamped her hand over her mouth. Who is it? Bertolt whispered. Hello? Is someone there? It's Uncle Max! Darkus exclaimed, scrambling up beside Virginia. Darkus? Uncle Max peered up at them. Is that you? Get me out of here! Oh gosh, Professor, Cut Professor Cuttle, I'm so sorry! Bertolt exclaimed. How did you get in there? I was trying to find you. Ouch, I need to talk to you about... Ah! He sucked in his breath. Blasted things are biting me. We'll have you out of there in a second, Professor Cuttle, Virginia said. Please stop struggling. Stop struggling? There's a plague of rats in here. Uncle Max looked at Darkus. I saw you three climb over the wall the other day, and I thought you might have made a den in here. So I came looking for you, which in hindsight was a terrible idea. I've been stuck in here for at least an hour. Darkus jumped down and helped Bertolt to move aside a mirrored panel and unlock the gate that had swung shut and trapped Uncle Max. They're tame rats, Bertolt explained, from a pet shop. You must have frightened them. I frightened them? Uncle Max pointed to the dead rats hanging down on strings around his face. What about these poor chaps? I found them in the basement of our block of flats, Bertolt smiled apologetically. They were already dead from poison. I put them in there to scare an intruder. Well, they certainly gave me a turn. Uncle Max huffed, crawling out of the cage. They smell awful. Well, I do apologise, Professor Cuttle, Bertolt stammered. They weren't meant for you. Thank heavens, Uncle Max sat up on his knees and smiled at the worried Bertolt. Jolly good trap, though. Not quite up to the Egyptian tomb standards, but nonetheless, pretty impressive. He looked at the children's guilty faces. So is someone going to tell me what's going on here, or do I have to guess? Virginia nudged Dark as he was staring at the floor. Your neck's bleeding, Uncle Max took Darkus by his shoulders. It's fine, I had a splinter, Darkus replied, covering the cut on his neck with his hand. Uh, would you like to come back to our camp for a cup of tea, Professor Cuttle, Bertolt asked politely. It might soothe your nerves and we can explain everything there. Camp, eh? Uncle Max straightened his safari hat. Don't mind if I do. They set off through the tunnels on their hands and knees, Baxter flying in front, leading the way. This place is a rabbit warren. Uncle Max exclaimed as they inched forward. It's a good job archaeologists are used to confined spaces. I'm sorry, Professor Cuttle, but we need to be quiet, Virginia whispered. We don't know when Pickering and Humphrey will be back. Apologies, Uncle Max whispered, whispered back. Understood. As they all filed through the door of base camp, Uncle Max whistled in amazement at the throbbing glow of fireflies reflected in the chandelier crystals dangling from the ceiling. This is quite a setup you've got here, he remarked as Bertolt plugged the portable kettle into the car battery. Most of this stuff was already here, Darker said. Apart from the kettle, Virginia added, that's Bertolt's. Uncle Max gazed up at the ceiling in wonder. Where have all these beetles come from? Darker looked at Virginia, but didn't reply. Baxter settled on his shoulder. Uncle Max saw the map on the back of the wardrobe and wandered over, inspecting the collection of images around the word Lucretia Cutter. He touched the edge of Novak's card. Do you take milk or sugar? Bertolt asked. Black, six sugars, thank you, Bertolt. Uncle Max turned to face Darkus, his voice suddenly serious. I think you'd better tell me exactly what's going on here, lad, don't you? Darkus, Virginia and Bertolt looked up at each other. Ain't no flim, and uh, no flim flam, please. Uncle Max took his cup of tea from Bertolt and sat down on the sofa. 
I want the truth. There was an awkward silence in which Uncle Max took a mouthful of tea. I found Dad, Darker said. Uncle Max sprayed his tea across the table. What? he spluttered. Lucretia Cutter has him in the cell in the basement of her house, Darker said hurriedly. How can you know that? Uncle Max was on his feet. By Jupiter, please tell me that you haven't been there. His face was pl flushed purple and his eyes were bulging out of their sockets. Darkus looked guiltily at Virginia and Bertolt and then nodded. Did she see you? Darkus nodded again, wondering if Uncle Max was about to have a heart attack. She shot at me, but she missed. That's how I got the splinter. She shot at you, Uncle Max paused, then dropped back down on the sofa and picked up his tea. Well, that's a relief. What? Bertolt spluttered. Why is that good? Because it means she doesn't know who he is, Uncle Max explained. If Lucretia Cutter had recognised Darkus, she wouldn't have shot at him. She'd have kidnapped him and used him against Barty. Uncle Max shook his head. I can't believe you'd be so stupid as to go into that Gorgon's house. You could have got yourself killed and your father too. What's a Gorgon? Virginia whispered to Bertolt. A monster woman who turns men to stone by looking at them, he replied under his breath. Darkus felt that he had been slapped in, his, in the face. When he'd gone to towering heights, he hadn't meant to put himself or Dad at risk. How could he when he didn't even know Dad was there? Then another thought occurred to him. You knew she had him all along, he gasped. No! Well, at least not until we went to the museum. And even then, I had no real evidence. Uncle Max shook his head. Her name over the door, that yellow ladybird, and her sudden arrival. These things are not enough to accuse someone of kidnapping, he sighed. I've been trying to find out where she's keeping him. I thought it might be in one of her cosmetic factories, in, in Wapping, he blinked. I tried her offices and the string of warehouses on the Thames, but with no joy. How? When? I haven't been going to work, Uncle Max admitted. And you may not believe this, but I do... A rather convincing impersonation of a confused delivery man. He smiled. I've got a blue boiler suit, a badge and a cardboard box. I wander into a building looking lost and start asking questions. People can be astonishingly helpful, you know. He tugged on his earlobe. I must admit, it didn't occur to me that she'd have him at her house. The nerve! She must be very confident she won't get caught. But why didn't you tell me? Darkus asked angrily. Darkus, I didn't have any proof that Lucretia Cutter had Barty, just a hunch, and I was looking for evidence. Darkus glared at his uncle. But today I thought I should pursue a different line of inquiry. Instead of trying to find out where Lucretia had Barty, I tried to, to try and find out why she has him. And that's when I came looking for you. I need to talk to you about your friend, he pointed at Baxter. I need to know more about your beetles, he lifted his hand up, gesturing to the fireflies. Darkus wasn't listening. He was so angry, his body was shaking. You've been keeping secrets from me. Darkus, I haven't, Uncle Max said softly. I wanted to be sure of the facts before I told you anything that might get your hopes up. Barty is in grave danger. He watched as Darkus struggled with what he was hearing. I'm here now, aren't I? Darkus nodded, his teeth clenched. What about you? Uncle Max raised an eyebrow. You've been keeping a few secrets of your own. Darkus looked at the floor. I didn't tell you the whole truth about how I found Baxter, he admitted. I thought you'd make me give him back. Well, how about you tell me now? Bertolt set about making more tea, while Darkus told his uncle about Baxter falling out of Humphrey's trouser leg, discovering the Beetle Mountain, and being kidnapped by the neighbours, and then rescued by the Beetles. Virginia described Darkus taking them to Beetle Mountain, and the oath that they had sworn to help him rescue her, his father and protect the special insects.